Starfield has now been out for a little bit and it's been another incredible week of mods, finally adding lightsabers to the game and all sorts of other goodies, like armada sized pirate ships that span the length of an entire shipping port, incredible nebulas dancing around the starlit sky, and so much more that you would not want to miss, so go grab your popcorn and welcome to this week's episode of Modding the Starfield with Heavy Burns. I'd like to give a massive thanks to Tainted Grail, Fall of Avalon, for sponsoring this video. Tainted Grail is an open world first person RPG with a deep and mature storyline, which offers many different ways of exploring its dark world. Over the past six months, the Tainted Grail team have been working on a patch which basically overhauls every system in the game, from combat animations all the way up to new spells and magic visual upgrades. In doing so, they have completed a massive upgrade across the entire game. They've also added three new viable gameplay styles, which consist of Stealth and Theft for a sneaky playthrough, Full Dual Wielding for a Barbarian theme, and finally Fist Fighting for a more close-up and personal approach to combat. The game now also features additional language variations such as Chinese, English, French, German and Polish, making the game more user-friendly. The patch will be live from the 3rd of October at 3pm Central European time. Again, thanks to Tainted Grail, Fall of Avalon, for supporting the channel, but without further ado, let's get into the video. The Settle Systems can be a lonely place, and we all know travelling the galaxies with a pet companion will enhance the experience tenfold. Introducing Foxmeat, the animal companion, which adds a fox bat as man's best friend across your journey. This furry fiend is a two-legged, two-armed sort of T-Rex shaped creature with a fox's face and bat's ears which makes him the ultimate combination of really cute, but also alien looking, possessing sort of porcupine spikes on his butt. Foxmeat will also happily follow you anywhere enjoying life and not judging you for your action, because as there is no creation kit released yet for Starfield, the mod actually implements Foxmeat by replacing Vasco with him, meaning you'll have access to him right at the start of the game. Although less like Vasco, he will mostly just sit and watch you fight for your life but occasionally he will actually fight things if they are close enough to him and he gets aggro, so he can sort of be a valuable asset to bring with you in a fight. But personally I quite like the lone wolf build in Starfield, but it does get a bit lonely, so this is a perfect middle ground for me. There is also an optional additional mod called Baby Vasco that can be used to resize fox meat to a more reasonably sized companion, all the way down to a small dog size or even basically microscopic size so small I had to turn off my in-game depth of field in order to even see him. So if you want basically a rodent sized companion that you can barely see even when he's next to you then your options are limitless, but generally I would opt for the option right above that where he's like an actual dog size so he fits the dog meat role more accordingly, but less dog and more alien. Next we're going to power through a series of mods that have came out more or less in the last week that change or add to different aspects of the game, and that's going to start with a mod named Immersive Lightsabers, which we all saw coming the moment Starfield was announced. But this mod replaces most melee weapons in the game with different lightsaber variants, which you can choose from yourself in the installation menu, fully fitted with custom sounds for wafting it around, as well as attacking and drawing, making it fit nicely into the world and playstyle of Starfield and for the first time adding lightsabers to a Bethesda game actually made sense. Next up, the modder Savran X has been progressively working through detailing many of Starfield's widespread textures, starting with caves, which improves all manner of wall textures within caves, mines and other stony interiors. Stone, which improves basically the same thing but mostly for exteriors or boulders you find across the world. Flora aims to improve the look of all the plants and harvestable greenery that you can scan and pick up on survivable surfaces. Crowd Optimize is aimed to improve the look of the random NPCs in cities, while keeping performance in mind, whereas NPCs is a more detailed overhaul of all the skin and character parts in order to make more important characters look that little bit better. 
and finally is hair, which improves the resolution and quality of the hair textures. Next is the Majestic AK Milky Way Replacer, which adds about 20 different high quality styles to fill your night sky. Starting with the real life Milky Way, then the Galaxies and Nebula, the Cosmic Tapestry, the Orion Nebula, the North American Nebula, the Carina Nebula, the Fighting Dragons of Ara, the Colorful Milky Way, the Light Show, my favourite, the Hodgepodge, and finally, Gamma Clouds. Each one of these, as you saw, actually illuminates light depending on the colour of the texture you choose. It's one of my favourite new mods and really makes the game look even more stunning, especially on more desolate moons and planets. Next is a mod that changes the fact that a lot of lootable and mostly all craftable food types are tubbed in plastic containers. Plated Not Crated aims to change that by removing or replating all of the food items that have this style, with open top trays which look a little nicer and appetising laid out across the world. If you carry a lot of food it's probably not for you because it would make more sense to tub it for travel, but for aesthetics it looks great and adds a lot to the world's clutter. Next is a mod which I will never uninstall ever again called Easy Read Dark UI which changes all of the in-game interfaces to dark mode, meaning you no longer flashbang yourself at 3am when reading a computer. And instead, it's all replaced with darker variants fitted to each terminal type, from all types of mission balls that you can find across the game, or just every regular computer you can read through. This is such a nice mod, and I'm fairly sure I will never turn it off for as long as I continue to play Starfield. But we still have one more mod to take a look at in this segment. Springfield Armory 1911 replaces the old earth pistol with a newly textured variant from the Springfield Armory. In my opinion, this is a great little mod to have on to spruce up the old earth pistol and give you a reason to stick with it over more flashy alternatives later in the game. It looks great in and out of the menu and makes it feel like a unique, more personalised weapon without totally going away from the original. And with that, we'll finally move on to the final mod of the video. One thing Starfield is missing is big ships. Ships so big your player looks like an ant. Ships so big in fact that it shadows over the entire Red Mile and kind of doesn't fit into most shipping ports. Pirate's Fleet is a mod which adds over 10 new handcrafted pirate design ships to your game and some of them greatly exceed the build limit. I mean so much so that your game might run at 5 FPS while viewing some of them in the ship builder but there are also a bunch of smaller, more manageable vessels that are a little more reasonable, obviously such as this scorpion-styled pirate ship. This pincer dinghy is designed to strike fear into the hearts of your enemies, with its poisonous visage and deathly design aimed to resemble a scorpion flying through outer space. And it's not just a spooky shape, but a deadly vessel, armed to the teeth with plenty of weapons to murder anyone who may mess with you. I mean its stinger is literally packed with about 9 missile launchers, this is by far not the most destructive ship this mod will let you pilot throughout the galaxy. These are what I like to call the HMS Don't Fuck With Me ships, that are so big and break the build limit so hard that you'll think you're manning an actual star station with your hired crew. And these things are not just all talk, but are absolutely armed to the teeth. I mean, whenever you shoot this thing, it feels like you're firing an orbital cannon. Not even to mention the missiles, which absolutely decimate anything in your pack. Flying this, you'll be virtually unstoppable in combat, which I guess if that's your jam, then you found the perfect mod for it. But the two main ships I featured are not even scratching the surface of all the options available in this fleet. No matter if you're looking for the absurdly huge and wacky that will ram through any enemy it's put up against across your travels, or if you want a stylish pirate fighter jet that you can call home and play a little more modest, this mod has everything you need in order to fit your pirate wishes. And with that and all the other mods featured in this episode, you have a few more mods to add onto your slowly growing mod list. And that's going to be it for this week's episode of Modding the Starfield. Be sure to endorse any of the mods you enjoy and check out the description to join our Discord community for everything Starfield modding. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.